born with him. You're born with gifts, talents, personalities, but ability is the skills you acquire to upgrade. So if you see someone being blessed, it doesn't mean they're better than you. It's just the ability to handle what the Lord is giving them is better than yours. So don't be jealous. If you develop your skills, the Lord will trust you more. So let me give an example. I was reading a document in the night. This was a missionary. She was a missionary in, I think, Central America. He went to this school. He used to teach, um, he used to teach on emotional healing, trauma, some things. And he went through a severe divorce, he was rejected by church, was speaking a lot of stories. And then he went to this school and he was taught how to do digital marketing. Digital marketing? They're not only that course, that thing you are teaching people how to make a course, put it online and start coaching my people. He paid all his bills. People start telling a minister of the gospel is not supposed to make money. Do you know it's not in the Bible? God gives you according to your ability. I remember the DTS students asked me, is it bad for someone to do full-time work or to do? I told him it depends on your ability. If your ability is only for full-time ministry, you can't do business. Don't do, don't do business. And the Lord, will, if God has not given the ability, your business will collapse. It's about your ability. It's not that all oh, God is famous people. So God, they were given according to what? Yeah. Let me repeat. You are born with gifts, talents, and what? Um, the number three. And personalities. These are inborn. But and when you train and upgrade them, they become what? Abilities. And God only deals with you according to your abilities. Another principle is in this room, you know, promotion is based about faithfulness. You will see at the end. But make sure you work on your ability. If the Lord is telling you, I want you to be a writer, go to school and write. If God is telling you, I want you to go and do this kind of business, go to school or go learn under someone to learn that skill. It will not come supernaturally. It happens, but it's not common. So don't be the common group. Okay? You know some people can go to heaven and get everything. But you know they have work to play here. Yes. Like Jimmy Swagger. How many about Jimmy Swagger? Jimmy Swagger was a famous evangelist. He was taught to play what? A keyboard by the Lord. Supernatural. He never went to any movie school. But you know he had to play it every day to make it sense. Because human beings are the ones listening to you, not angels anymore. So you need to do some good work. Today is still plays the key. Okay? So make sure you work on your ability. You may say you're gifted in that area, you have this talent, but if you don't go for training in that area to upgrade your skills, the Lord will not give you everything you plan. The other day I was looking for morning star uh, school, and I found this course that was very funny. This guy teaches high-level interpretation of dreams. I said that one I'm going to buy. Because interpretation dream is something I've been pursuing for five years. And you well, uh, I'm not there. I can interpret dreams. There is some, where I went today, this lady was asking them three things and I interpreted for her. She took, she took my number. You must come to my church. <laughs> yeah. This uh, interpretation of dreams is an ability Daniel was given. Amen. I'm here to practice it. So I told God, dreams, I'll work on it. Because dreams is the secret to the kings. Amen. You know that? President see dreams that they don't want to do it, they go to a society with the <laughs> Then we get more problems in the country. We need people who can interpret dreams for business people and politicians so they are drawn close to the law like them can never. So that when I told God when I went to see the Jacobs training, where Pamela, we met Bobby Brethren, she interprets dreams. I bought the books. I remember Maggie, I told Maggie to join that school, she joined that school. Because Maggie used to have so many dreams. I got tired of interpreting. I told her to go to the school. You know she enrolled, she bought it. You have to go to school. I bought five dictionaries of dream interpretation. It's an ability. I told God I will pursue even if it's not mine. Amen. I'm not a prophet, but I need it. <laughs> you know God has honored me. Me, I know to interpret. By the time I wake up in a dream, I know. There's some that are mystery, the Lacarido. Those ones I don't be really bother these days. I keep quiet and wait. One day the Lord will tell me, this is that. I show. There's something happened with the Lord told me this is that. Okay. This is funny. It's someone. So I didn't know how to interpret then it, The thing happened. The pastor came and started talking to me some things. The Lord told me, remember what I said? Don't say anything. Just keep quiet. This is a fulfillment of a dream. I didn't ask them any questions. So I want to encourage you. What ability you want to work on? 
some of us want to work, uh, uh, let me give you an example. Can I please go? When I got this gift in LI, which I went and became aware, sometimes I just go fix God. God, I have to hear the details here. You need to start to do this, 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 this. Wisdom works the problem. You don't have a problem, you can never have wisdom. It's not like what your knowledge you're given. But wisdom, you must have a problem. But you see, you have to ask the Lord. You have to ask the Lord. You cannot study in a textbook. Wisdom does not come. There's natural wisdom, uh, spiritual wisdom that comes by knowing the word of God. But there's wisdom, the person. It comes supernaturally. That's what I know I've passed the test. Because I've done a lot of nice things. Hallelujah. You know, sometimes you do something and say, it's really? And the Lord tells it was not you. It was me. <laughs> Even recently, I woke up one day on June 3rd, December 31st, I woke up. To me, I put my feet down. I had the Lord say, like this. I said, really? Hey, that's what we have to talk about. There's some things I don't agree with you. But later, after a few days, I did. I uploaded this course on this platform. The Lord told me, go upload that course on that platform. I read, I studied it, I uploaded it. Steve is my witness. So I told you when you were talking, I have uploaded it. I have been faithful, now I'm waiting. And then another told me, you don't ask me a question. I gave you wisdom. You should be a life coach. Because you can solve people. It can never occur me, I can make it a business. He told me, if I've given you wisdom, you can be a life coach. So stop sitting on my gift. <laughs> So I'll have to read a big textbook I have on life coaching. There's a course I saw. I have to go and enroll because I just want to be free. Develop your gift. Develop your talents and develop your personality. The personality God doesn't develop. The Lord rubs it himself to remove the rough spaces to make it nice. If you're a choleric, it makes you learn to care for people. So you don't drive people crazy in this world. Okay? If you're a like let me, it causes you to talk a lot. If you talk a lot, just you listen, listen. He doesn't take care of your personality, just removes the rough end and tell the Lord, tell the Lord not to be nice. I wish Moses had told the Lord to work on him. He'll have not died before his time. No Moses died before his time. Believe me, my friend. Don't tell me Moses died according to God's way. He was punished. He was told you God died. Because when you embarrassed him before Israel, go. Go to that mountain. You were sent to a mountain to that. It was not God's time. God had told Moses, you take the children of Israel from Egypt to the promised land. He failed. You know, I've gone to Israel, River Jordan, Moab, plains of Moab. He could see the mountains there across, and he died there. The Lord told him to go to that mountain and died there. Because of anger. He never worked on his personal. So, I always say, when I was young, let me tell you a story. I remember when I met with Hamon, I read his books. One time I went to his church. He said something that really made me wonder. He said, in the 50s, if you are a gifted man of God like Tim Osborne, because he mentioned some people he loved, William Branham, when you go and ask them, how does this gift work? They'll tell you, we don't know. We don't know. Just what? The Lord told me it's not the truth. You have to know the science of the gift. So God started raising up in Hamon. Who could prophesy to 3,000 people at the same time? That, those days, 50s, if you had a prophetic ministry, we will fast for a week, come to a church, and the prophet will speak to three people and say the words are finished. <laughs> That's the truth. I have that book. God told Bill Hammond, those people are lying. I have many thoughts for my people that I can give every day. It is your mouth that is hindering me. So one day, God, Bill Hammond put the Lord in that spot. He went to a meeting and lined up like a thousand people. He prophesied all of them accurately. The Lord told me, it's human beings that limit me. Me, I have a lot of thoughts about Morgan. I can give him a prophecy every day. He broke the barrier. No wonder they call him the father of the father of what? The prophetic movement. He broke the barrier. Then they brought this man called John Wimber. He was a musician from the hippie generation. He gets self street field. He has word of knowledge. He could heal people on the plains. And you realize he could give you 10 words of knowledge. Before that, when you gave one word of knowledge, people would clap for hours. <laughs> until John Weaver came, the guy would tell you until you jump out from your seat in your plane. Everyone witnessed God said supernaturally. Because he learned to give more word of knowledge. 
So what I'm trying to say, you can grow your ability, supernaturally and naturally. Until, I always say, Jesus is the standard, until you become like Jesus the Son. When Jesus can say in a meeting, and he knew all their thoughts, and there are 5,000 people there, how is that possible? You know there's a meeting that was reading, there were 5,000 people, and the Bible says he knew all their thoughts. That's what the Lord is returning the church to. Not one word of knowledge, not one song, like worship leaders. Give us a song, have only one song. Really? So you go and listen to the angels and give us 10,000 songs. God broke those bar barriers. So where we came from, if you know church history, we came from a bad place. If you prayed for the sick, if you prayed for one cripple, people screamed for the next year. Until people brought someone like Morris, I don't know, who healed everyone in a children's home. Everyone. The children's home was closed. What do you want? It's their way. Number two. So I'll go very quickly. Uh, let's continue. Uh, and he and he would receive the five talents when and traded with them. Because let's go the first one. And to the one he gave five talents to uh, to the one he gave five talents to another two and to one each according to his ability and immediately he left for the journey. Okay? Let's go to the next verse. There's something I'll do. And then he, he had received the five talents and traded with them. Now, there are many versions that say he immediately left. So, if you want to see multiplication, it's instant obedience. There are two people in the Bible who, if you read the Bible carefully, if you read the book of Mark, any version, you'll find the word immediately, immediately, immediately. You go and Google. Another person is Abraham. When God will speak to Abraham, you do the next thing. Whether it makes sense or not, you have to learn immediate obedience if you're going to start multiplying yourself. That means you have to hear well, because you can't obey quickly if you don't know what you obey. This guy, the reason it worked for him, the multiplication, because he immediately left and started investing. The word traded them, he went to invest. Don't, don't, I always say, don't overanalyze God. I've been there before, I'm analyzing God. So what do you mean God? When will it happen? How will it happen? Is it yesterday? God is saying, why can't he just do it then we find out? God will never give you the details, please. Because if he gave you the details, you don't have faith. So God will hide behind and say, Look, go and do it. Even if you fail, at least you did it. Most ministries never begin with success. I've gone through failure. I've left the mission field and packed. Twice. Okay? First one, I ran away. The second one, I, I came from Wajia, went to the house, the ministry house, and I made a mistake of calling Pastor Mongolio at 10.30 p.m. Just to tell him I'm here. He told me, my son, the Lord is saying, go back. Go back. <laughs> I went back that way. I should have never called him. <laughs> I went back to a jail. Actually, I left place I went to a jail. I stayed five years from 92 97. Because I was scared. Failure doesn't mean nothing's wrong. Ministry is difficult. Life is better not ministry. Life is difficult on this earth. No one is easy. People say, I wish I had money. You don't know what you are saying. You know, people have money, have a lot of answers. Because they think everyone is going to steal their money. The government wants their taxes, this one wants this, and they're like, that's what people become one. Selfish. I've met very rich people, by the way, so I'm not what I'm saying. Or some people say, oh, if I had three cars, I'd be okay. Just think about that statement. Why do you need three cars and you have only two legs to gears? But there's this thing in my mind, if I have three cars, I'll be happy. It doesn't make sense. Or sometimes you say, if I ate Yamachoma rice every day, I know I'm rich. Do you know, there's a, there's a person who told me, very prophetically, she came and told us, even the rich people can only eat one rice plate at a time. <laughs> so even if I give you 10 plates, it doesn't help you. It's not the abundance. You have only one stomach. And you have only one stomach, not like a cow that can process anything. <laughs> a cow can eat and store for the next three days. A camel can eat a lot of grass and go and walk for six months. A human being just to come out the next day. <laughs> so you only eat one plate at a time. What I'm trying to say, don't be overanalyzing God. It doesn't help the Lord. Okay, let me say, okay, because 
I, I know the Bible a bit. If God studied the word delay, the revelation is there, it's also Ezekiel. Why does delay happen in people's lives? Have you ever asked yourself? Because they did not do what they not said. The fact of analyzing God. Delay is caused by human beings, not by the law. God does not delay his program. But sometimes he has to wipe up a whole generation, get a generation that if you read the pattern of the Bible, it is very scary. I always tell people, many times when people teach the Bible, they teach childish stuff. That when I die, I go to heaven. So, when you reach heaven, what are you bringing for the Lord? You, you know, if you talk like the Lord say, I send you on the earth, what, what glory you bring me? So there is more than just living on this earth, my friend. We are not here just to go to heaven. Actually, when you go to heaven, the last generation will stay in heaven only for seven years, maybe, or three and a half, depending on the old three and a half days, I don't care, but you come back to the earth. Heaven is not our home. That heaven is wrong. The reprint is to teach you very carefully. The earth is our home. When we go to heaven, Jesus comes through the earth, and then he removes this earth and creates a new earth. Do you know what I found out? Not from a prophet, there's a book I read. This guy wrote the three sons of Noah. There's a book he wrote about the earth. The earth, if you don't know, if you read the Bible carefully, the earth was the headquarters of the Father. When he created the universe, he put the garden of Eden where? On the earth to dwell with man. God doesn't live in planets. He went to the planets because of sin. Please, that's the garden of Eden was taken up. In Revelation, it's returned. Exactly. And it says there will be no more sun, no more what? There will be no more oceans. No, there are no oceans. Go read Revelation careful. No more sorrow, no more oceans. Everything will return to the original. Earth is our home. We just spoiled it for 6,000 years. And this is the headquarters of the Father. Believe me. Why, why does God need a garden? Does he need a garden? No. He created a garden for us so they can come and dwell with, with us. And then in the garden he added a city and then a mountain. Praise the Lord. And we are reading my Bible. I always say, there are things I will teach church. People say, yeah, it's not, it's the Bible. We are not my Bible. These are the theology that confuses people and people don't want to watch to immediately obey the Lord. Immediately obey. Okay. People say, I wish I could just die and go to heaven. When you reach heaven, like I said two weeks ago, you took a letter, should I have thousand years because you missed your schooling on earth. So don't be in a hurry to go to heaven. Finish your school. In school, there is no setup and sit there. So even the thing you took three days to hear, God will tell you, is Akuna Shidaka. There will be manna, but you go to school for 20,000 years. You missed my test. Okay? Delay comes because of us, not the Lord. Please believe me. I would rather, there's a time when I was young, 19, the Lord told me, I would rather when I tell you something you fail than sitting there and trying to process me. God is very happy you fail because at least you try. But if you don't do it, even failure is not a reward. That's a, God knows human beings are failures, by the way. He knows it. He knows no one is perfect except Jesus. Don't be afraid when you fail. How many have lost money? You lost money until you went. Me, I've lost money until I went. <laughs> I lost a lot of money, 350,000. Ah. I had to pay back this bank. And I paid. I think I've shared that story. The a woman and other are threatening to come and auction some things. Hey. My friend, I prayed that God gave me wisdom. They wrote me a letter, told me to call. If you don't call, they tell me to get for letters. I know I was finished. So the Lord told me to call them. I called them. And I negotiated this day to collect and told me, if you pay 30,000 now, no, that was another law. That's another there. This was second law. I owed one eighty k. I have no money. The guy told me, if you will pay 30k on the spot, we will reduce it. I borrowed money and paid. They reduced it. I looked for money and finished that law in three months. I told them, you must write me a letter that I finished my law. You know <laughs> Because of what of this stuff. The Lord told me, don't delay. He then told them to, they have collected everything because of a little money. You know what I'm trying to say? Don't delay what the Lord speaks to you. Okay? Do it, even if you fail. Remove the dust, tell God I tried to fail, and what next? Because when you process God, you start delaying, okay? Finally, 
The last guy. <laughs> Let's go to the last guy. Let's go to the last guy. Um, but he who received one went and dug in the ground and hid his Lord's money. Hey, I like that first. He, he hid someone's money. He's not even his. You know your talents, your gifts are not yours. So why hide me? You know, I was in a meeting today. John told me last night, John, John, my friend, from now. So John is talking some stories, and me, and then he told me, I told John, we sold the van. The first thing John did is start laughing at me. How? How? It means you are going to walk. I told John, what's wrong with using my motorcycle? <laughs> he really laughed. He really sympathized. I told him, I've passed that stage. Like a wizard. It was going to happen the next day. No, we don't go down the river. Me, I did the Uber. You don't know I'm lost. My shoes are clean like you. <laughs> <laughs> we had bishops there with serious cars. <laughs> serious cars. Go like that. But when I arrive, everyone knows. But everyone knows me. I don't know how they know me. <laughs> this is the country. But they don't have with that book. It doesn't matter. Why are you worrying about this stuff? Me <laughs> doesn't worry me. I know the vehicle car. Not one. I know it. I've passed that stage of worry. I always tell people in Ghana we have two vehicles, a, a minibus and a four-wheel drive. SUV. I've been carried by military helicopters. I've been carried with dog uh, what the goats. I've been carried in Russian Antonov. I've been carried in a, a motorcycle for two hours in Mozambique. Uh, I think my back hurt for a month. I've been sad comfort class in an airplane. Don't worry about these things. Because sometimes you tell God, I wish I could fly fast class. The Lord said, one day I will test you the motorcycle. <laughs> I will take you to Mozambique where there is no transport, no bus. And if you complain, you don't qualify. These things we are given, we don't fight for it. Please, I've learned from the Lord. You cannot fight for it. You cannot fight for things God is decided to bless. He, the Bible says he gives you because of mercy and grace. I told the other day, I told someone, if you have ever gone to heaven or read anyone who has gone to heaven, I think I was telling Adam the other day, you know when you reach in heaven, no one talks about money. When you arrive broke, Akuna Kamaswani your money, because that's not a problem in heaven. God has bigger problems for humans than money. In heaven, I've never seen Kenneth Hagin trying to ask the Lord money. The Lord told him there's no money in heaven. In heaven, you talk serious issues. The Lord told you, I want to talk to this you about your daughter. And then one day the Lord showed me two years ago because of perspective class. I asked God, why is it you don't want to talk these things? The Lord told me, listen to me. When you grow and mature, everything in mind is free. When you become a son, a son does not ask, you take it. So the Lord told me, work on your maturity. When you reach the stage, I can trust you. Some of us, we are given 5,000 shillings today. At this moment. <laughs> <laughs> and that issue, and the Lord said, This one has even forgiven to give his time. <laughs> we and I get a lot of money. The first thing I do is I tithe. I have tithe good money. I honestly, I, I Papa knows, I will not touch the money until I pray. God, why did you give me this money? Because sometimes I don't want to quote by the Lord. I gave you money, you get it. I have prayed and he told me, Take this. There's a time he told me, Take all that money I've given you. Go give that brother in the Kesha. I took it in a Kesha in the night. I gave him everything. I was in campus. A lot of me don't take my money. The one I kept, I was almost stuck to death. True story. And I decided to keep some. I bought some nice shoes. I bought a watch because I was a student. I bought this. What I was going to rumor, I gave these guys coming from the cinema. They surrounded me with a knife and stabbed me. I held that so because I knew if I remove it, the second one will kill me. I held it, they took all my shoes, took everything, took my watch, only my university. The Lord told me, remember. I said, you should have given her everything. So I've learned not to hold on things. I don't hold on things. God can tell you, my friend, this is not yours. You've been given by grace and it can be taken by grace. Okay? But you see, the Lord can bless you to an ability that even if you are shocked, it brings tears because he loves people. Well, let's let people, my theology has changed because of the last seven years. God loves human beings. Please believe me. 
God is not on the side of fighting us. The Bible says clearly, He fights for us. He's not against anyone. Why should God fight me? But you see, if you don't do this guy who took the Lord's money and buried, that's embarrassing. Some of us have buried our abilities and our gifts, and we can even hear from your words in Yahoo. That's what we say. When did it become yours? And then now God has to start this battle of discipline and correction for seven years to make sure you release it. He told Israel, I took you through the wilderness for 40 years to teach you what? That man shall not live what? So sometimes when you refuse, the Lord will take you in a battle. Some battles are the Lord. To prove to you you don't own anything on this earth. Okay? Now the next thing, he did something very dangerous. Okay? Let's continue the next verse. After a long time, the Lord of those servants came and settled their accounts. Let's continue. And uh, here the verse. Uh, let's jump that one. The last. Jump that one. I'll go to the last guy. Yeah, this is the guy. Then he would receive them. One talent came and said, Lord, I know you. <laughs> you are a hard man. <laughs> Do you know? The other day I was doing a post you. The Lord told me, the Lord people have accused me. This is one of them. Another one is Martha. You go read that story. In fact, I made notes. I'm going to change the way I teach it. When, the, when, when the Jesus visited Martha and Mary, the Bible said, who went and opened the door? Martha. So Mary, the sister, decided to sit and leave. And the Bible says, Martha was distracted. And she went and told the Lord. She told the Lord to his face, you don't care. You don't care. Why can't you tell my sister to come and help me? So the Lord asked me, you see, this is embarrassing. I am the guest of honor. And you are telling me I don't care. Now you want me to solve your household issues. What did the Lord tell you? No. You are disrupted about many things. Mary has chosen it. And it cannot be together. That's another reason. You know, how many of us have told the Lord you don't care? We are the first one. Or like this one. God, how many have told God you are a hard person? Me have told you. Me have told you you lie to me. I told you my children are a liar. Seriously. You told me to serve you and all these problems are begun. So I like Jeremiah, Jeremiah told the Lord you are a liar. You, you are a liar. It's the Bible. Jeremiah told me you are a liar. You know, you call the Lord a liar like Jeremiah, he will come and speak nicely. He came and explained to me. He asked me some questions. By that time I was healed. I didn't even remember to repent. When you accuse the Lord is a liar, you will see a different thing. Job tried it. How did he come to Job? Why are you there? When I was creating all this stuff. God is not afraid because you don't care. This guy told the Lord, you are a hard man. You reap where you have not planted. Have you ever told the Lord like that? <laughs> have you ever told the Lord, why is it you always take my money? She go and take someone to the ground. <laughs> you may have asked the Lord, so you have to give me a guru at least. You know you have like 500 shillings, you feel like even spiritual. <laughs> the Lord takes it away. I've been there. You know you are broken, you are not God, I'm not broke because I didn't work. He told me to give away everything. And he started feeling bad. The Lord just tested you. He told the Lord, you read where? This is a bad accusation. And you gather where you have not scattered seed. Who gave him the seed? The Lord. But the next reason was, I started to finish it. The third reason, he told him, can you finish? I was afraid. <laughs> and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Look, here's what belongs to you. Fear. Fear will keep you from every promise of God. Fear is the worst enemy. I learned the other day, I was reading a book, and this story, do you know fear opens a portal for demonization? The way they explained it made sense. Because I've realized people have fear, and the enemy can carry you anywhere. He gives you anxiety, worry, ulcers, because of fear. So multiplication will come because you grow your skills. Number two, you obey the Lord immediately. And number three, you do what? Don't be afraid. Trust the Lord. Just do it. Don't, never. Normally you'll be a seer or a spiritual person. The Lord can smell fear 10,000 miles into your life. So I always say, never go to the Lord and be afraid. It's not a good idea. When the Lord tells you don't, have, don't be afraid, doesn't mean it's a good thing, but it's not good also to be told always don't be afraid. Because the Lord was wondering, why do you worry so much? Sure you die 10,000 times before you die. Then when you hear the AK-47, ah, la, 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 la. 
the whole night. You know you die ten times. <laughs> it happens once here. But still, if you wake up, you pinch yourself, you're still alive. Fear has a bad way of destroying us. Okay, how many have had an AK-47? That's the worst gun. The sound is bad. People just start running and the bullets are not strong by the way. AK-47 you can shoot someone and survive. But not a machine gun. So I realized the noise, whoever made that, it just it's like a psychological weapon. The noise itself, you start running for the life. Even policemen don't know. You know what I'm trying to say? Don't allow fear to keep you from developing your feelings. Stop asking the Lord, will it work or not? Will people get saved if I preach or not? If they don't get saved, at least you pay. Fear will keep you from many things. And the Bible says in Revelation 21, and then those who be thrown in the lake of fire, who's included? And they fear. If you read Isaiah, it says, I think Isaiah 7 or 8, one of those chapters, where God says, talks about fear. Don't fear men. Fear will land you in eternal fire. So don't be a fearful person. Tell the Lord to deal with you. Okay. Can we stand up and pray? Father, we just want to thank you. We want to bless you, Lord Jesus. We thank you for the ministry of worship today, the ministry of prayer in the morning. Thank you for the ministry of your wife. Thank you for the people who are ministered to today. Lord Holy Spirit, I pray that even the words we receive, that we will carry to our hearts. We will not let fear keep us from our destiny. In the name of Jesus. Father, we shall be deliberate that everything you've given us, it shall multiply. Because we are working on it daily. Lord, we are working on it. We are working on it. We are impacting people every day. We are developing our skill level, Lord. Whether it's supernatural stuff, whether natural stuff, whether our jobs, whether in our families, Lord, we pray, show us how to develop everything you've given us until we shall become excellent. And Father, I pray, help us to have obedience. Obedience in our lives. Even when it doesn't make sense, Holy Spirit, help us to obey. I pray, Father, that you may just cover us with the blood of Jesus, even as we leave this place. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So